We're joined now by Robinson Girls Lacrosse coach Liz Case and Rams senior midfielder Taylor Caskey. Of course, they come off the state championship victory against W.T. Woodson to take the 6A title in the VHSL. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having us. Um, Got to start off with you, Coach. You, know, you took over a program that had some previous success a while ago, had fallen some hard times in a tough first year for you. How were you able to turn things around like you have? Um, just hard work. I mean, I was committed to building the program and helping with the youth programs to instill good traditions and good habits, and it paid off. Now, I know that you do have some background in coaches on the club teams. You know, sure. is, is that important at getting into the youth originally and say, hey, making them want to be a Robinson Ram and play for you? Absolutely. It does help um, getting into the local youth programs and seeing who's coming up the line and who's interested in playing lacrosse. Um, even at Robinson, I do a club program the off-season to try to generate some interest. Now, one thing that folks may not know about you, doing some research, that you, when you were at George Mason, you were in a car accident during your playing career, returned to the field. Tell me a bit about that and how that influences your coaching life. Um, I think it just made me a stronger person. Um, you know, when they were telling me that after the, in the actual incident of being hit by the car, they were saying that I'd probably never walk again mm -hmm. or definitely lacrosse is not even in the, you know, the scheme of mm -hmm. things. But after nine months of rehab and them, you know, just hard work, it definitely, it paid off because I was able to return to the field and, you know, complete my career at Mason. Yeah, and of course, uh, moving on to what you've moved on to now, coach of this really good Robinson lacrosse team. Taylor, we get to the state championship game, but I got to ask you this. There is a story, it was in the papers, that you not only attended proms around your state <laughs> title game, you attended the W.T. Woodson prom. What went into that thought, and are you, were you okay with this, the decision looking back on it? Um, so I got asked to that prom <laughs> I was a few weeks before mm -hmm. we knew about states and of course no one c would have predicted that we were going to play each other and I'm really close friends with a lot of mm -hmm. people at Woodson and girls on the team so I didn't see a problem with it initially and then I mean prom could, was kind of awkward just because <laughs> you could you could feel the tension but we were, we were such good friends that I didn't really think it would affect anything in the future and I knew no matter what like we'd be okay, <laughs> so. We're by the end of the second prom, were you completely dog-tired considering <laughs> what you had gone through over the last two days there? Um, yeah, I was exhausted. <laughs> it was like 10.30, we just left the dance, and I'm like, okay, I'm ready to go to bed. I was like, Taylor, no, you gotta keep going, like, you gotta stay up, and they're like, we're done with senior year, and I'm just sitting there like, okay, but I'm done with, with this. this night, like, I need to go <laughs> to bed. I really hadn't gotten that much sleep for the past few days. So I really needed that rest, but don't worry, I stayed up and I, <laughs> I had fun. So, Coach, did you know about your player's plan and did you I agree did. with it? I, I did agree with it because, like, I, <laughs> we, I mean, I do know a lot of the Woodson players mm -hmm. as well, and I, I love those families as well. And I think the biggest thing is I just warned her, just be careful, you know. I think that's even from my injury or anything that over mm -hmm. life. I just am very protective of them and just wanted to make sure they're always safe. Um, so I just said, just be careful and go, go to bed early. <laughs> Try to get home early. I went, I went to bed by like 12. So. <laughs> I trusted Taylor. Like, I thought you'd make good decisions. Well, it was so. a big day for you guys as you win the state championship 13-9 over W.T. Woodson. Um, talk about the rivalry with them and uh, maybe more so uh, the game itself. Again, another back-and-forth game with the Cavaliers. Um, you know, it started out, we were doing really well, and then um, they came back at halftime, and it was definitely um, – it, it was – it was scary there for a little bit. Yeah. We, we didn't want it to be that close at all. But um, towards the end there, we were pretty confident in the last few minutes of the game that we had it. So but we did have, we had to make ch changes during halftime. We, we brought up Emily Kripchak, who is one of our draw girls that is amazing on the draw. So we brought her up and she took care of business and got the draw. Mm -hmm. A few big uh, performances in that game, uh, Caitlin Lucarelli, Katie Chukowski, and Dan Danielle Valenti, I believe in goal, all had big games. Talk about what they were able to do in the matchup. Um, you know, it was really it was impressive to see um, Danielle Valenti come out and just make those stops in the beginning of the game because she definitely kept us in the game. Um, and it was just really, it, it was really just that motivation that she brings to the team that um, really helped get all the girls psyched up and keep going and because it was really hot and it was, everyone was pretty yeah. tired and that it just kept them going and through the game. And then with uh, Caitlin making her goals and 
um, Joukowsky coming up with five goals was huge. We, we needed those goals, so it was important. Yeah, anytime you get a performance like that, it's going to be big. Now, yeah. Taylor, back to you. Uh, obviously, you play for a pretty good coach in Coach Case. What's it like playing for her? I mean, I've played for her since my freshman year, and I've been lucky that I haven't had to deal with switching coaches throughout mm -hmm. my four years. And I've just gotten to grow as a person and gotten to know her a lot better and understand her coaching style, and I think that's helped me along the mm -hmm. way. Just understanding when, you know, you do certain things on the field, you got to make sure that Coach Case is happy. And I, <laughs> I think we've, um, the whole, my class that's graduating this year, I think we've really gotten to know her a lot better and gotten to get the best side of her and we've been lucky because we started so horribly and then <laughs> as the years went on I just I was glad I was with the journey that was able to go up from where we started which was a pretty bad start. <laughs> Is that part of where the ability to fight off complacency you guys go through unblemished this year is it come from the fact that you were there when you saw when this program wasn't very good and you don't want to ever go back there? Oh yeah 100 percent um the first year we started we didn't win any games I think sophomore year we were happy because my sophomore year mm -hmm. we were able to break um 500 which mm -hmm. you know for us that was a big deal and I think that was was that the first year we beat Woodson yes I think that was the first year we beat Woodson and I remember that being the most exciting game of my career like before all states happened and everything so I think just it was good to start where we did because it gave us a good idea of what we not what we didn't want to revisit and I think anything from that point on was just um, you know, a good outcome. So even if we lost games, we're like, well, at least we were better than we were my freshman year or sophomore year, and we just got better every year. Coach, what was the turning point for this program to go, like I said, where it was from to where it is now, where it is a state championship program that's put up multiple championships? And I think one of the biggest things is that all the girls, um, they got to know my expectations, and they were willing to do what it needed to be done to get there. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was a lot of stuff too, of um, a lot of girls starting to play club. They were, we got them involved in off-season stuff and off-season training. And you know, when you go to practice, it's two hours, but it's not two hours of goof off time. Mm -hmm. It's intense and we're gonna practice. And like she said, if I'm not happy, we're gonna make changes. And you know, it's kind of, a, it's important because you have to hold that bar and you have to keep raising it. And the biggest thing I felt was with this team and teams earlier, especially after the Woodson first beat, mm -hmm was the fact that they needed to believe in themselves. And I think that was, I believed in them, but I think for them to believe in themselves and to get that first win really helped push the program over the hump. And, you know, from then on, they understood that, like, you know, hard work does pay off and it, it's been paying off. Now, you kind of go into the psychological aspect there. I think, and I talked to Coach Curran, the boys coach at Robinson about this, you, know, you guys as well play some private schools. Yes. How important is that to kind of get that look at maybe a different, maybe even a better program as you move through in a season? Well, I think personally, um, you know, I came from a high school program that was extremely successful. So we always wanted to play the better teams to get better. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't help you if you keep playing teams that you could beat. So my, my goal was to get teams that were going to give us good competition. And when we started beating private school teams, that really did help their confidence level and to say, hey, you know what, we can play with really good teams and we could continue to keep winning. Now you lose Taylor, you lose some other ones, yes. but obviously a third state title is going to be a goal. Yeah. Can you do it again? I think we definitely have it. I mean, we definitely have some good girls coming up the line that have been doing the same thing that these girls started out doing. Um, and it's even nicer that they even started out younger. So, mm -hmm. you know, like next week we have our Robinson Ram girls across camp mm -hmm. all week. And those are the girls that have continued to come every year. So now they're finally coming up and they're going to be freshmen. So it's really nice to have those girls come up. Taylor, you leave the program. I believe if I'm, my research is right, you're going to Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. What are your plans there? Will they involve lacrosse? Um, so they're definitely going to involve lacrosse. Um, I've been in contact with the coach, and I am trying to walk onto the team mm -hmm. if I can. Um, but if that isn't an option, club is also a very uh, viable option, which is something, you know, no matter what, I'm going to have fun as long as I'm playing the game, and it's going to be competitive no matter what. So I'm not worried about that, but I'm definitely looking forward to the future. And yeah, just we'll, we'll check it back because I'm not sure yet, but I, I think it's looking good for what could yeah. be in the future. They yeah. got a new coach, which is nice too. Well, I'm sure people will be following along your journey and Coach Case, I'm sure they'll be following along what your Rams are able to do next year as they look for the three-peat. Again, thank you to Liz Case, Taylor Kasky for joining us. Congratulations on another state championship. Thank you. Thank you.
We now pause to remember the life of Dennis Stewart, whose impact on the sport of lacrosse can be felt across the DMV. Stewart was deeply involved with Triple Edge Lacrosse, and we here at DMV Stream would like to send our sincere condolences to Dennis's family and loved ones.